You're listening to Her Confidence Her Way Podcast, episode 125. This episode is sponsored by my free vision board workshop. 頭の中にあるモヤモヤを整理したい。やることが頭に浮かんでるけどまだはっきりしない自分への将来のビジョンをクリアにしたいこんな思いで日々を流したように生きていませんかそんなあなたぜひビジョンボードを一緒に作って一歩を踏み出しましょうビジョンボードはあなたの目標夢を叶えるお手伝いをしてくれます実際にこのワークショップを受講していただいた方は以前にこんな不安を抱えていましたすぐ1ヶ月先のこともモヤモヤしていて漠然と毎日を過ごしていた自分が何が欲しいのか分かっていなかったなんとなくやりたいという思いだけがただ頭の中にあったそしてこのワークショップを取った後に何が良かったかを聞いたところステップに分かれていて動画やメールで励ましてもらえたこと Facebook グループも良かったですリスト作りで自分の理想が明確になったこと自分が何を目指しているか分かった Facebook で他の方の進み具合や内容が良い刺激になりましたという感想をいただいていますそして実際にどんな変化が見られたでしょう何をするべきか分かりました完璧じゃなくてもいいからとにかく行動できた自分を褒めてあげたいと思いましたボードの内容が今実際に自分がやるべきことやりたいこと実際に自分がアクションを起こせば叶う内容に変わり見ていてモチベーションが上がりますという感想をいただいていますこのワークショップは期間限定で10月21日からの5日間です Did I mention that this workshop is free? Yes これは無料のワークショップです参加はニュースレターを登録されている方のみです今週の金曜日に招待状が E メールにて送られてきます I cannot wait to see your vision board. Come join us. Hello, girlfriends. Welcome to Her Confidence Her Way Podcast. I am your host, Emiko Rasmussen. Mina san, konnichiwa. Her Confidence Her Way Podcast host no Emiko des. Kyo mo kono podcast o kite kurete. Domo arigato gozaimas. I always say this and I don't say this lightly. Thank you so very much for taking the time to listen to this episode. I know you have so many other things that you need to do, and you're choosing to show up and listen to this episode. So it means a lot to me, and I hope that this will help you to move towards what you really want to do. Okay, let's do a listener shout out. This week's listener shout out goes to Nobuyo san des. Nobuyo san kara wa atashi mo yokohama no shushin desu yo tei fun ni message. ここからハマコとしてつながりました、えー、彼女からは初めて聞いたのですがとても素敵な番組でしたすっかりファンになってしまいましたというふうにメッセージが来ましたそしてまあローカルの<笑>いろんなお話をしていて私がどこの短大に行ったかとかいろんなお話を一緒にさせていただきました「Well, Nobuyo さん Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and I appreciate your support so thank you」All right, let me introduce today's guest. 今回のゲストは私がインスタグラムでファンで追っかけをしている方です。<笑>追っかけっていうとなんか変な感じですが。I am a big fan of this guest, today's guest, and I am so honored that I get to have a conversation with her. Today's guest is a life family photographer and freelance translator. Her name is Miwa Teresa. Please enjoy my conversation with Miwa. Hello, Miwa. Welcome to Her Confidence Her Way podcast. I am super, super, super excited to have you on my show. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you?、I'm、doing great. I am such a fangirl of yours. <laughs> <laughs> So, I just, I, I was just like so excited this morning. Like, I'm going to interview you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, let's get started. And can you tell us about, well, I know a lot about you. I, I have been stoking a lot, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure listeners would love to know who you are. So, tell us about yourself. 
Okay, um, my name is Newa Teresa, and I was born in Japan, actually. I moved to the States when I was like one. Um, I grew up in Connecticut. I was there until I graduated high school, and I went to college in Japan. And then after college, I worked in Japan for a little while. I was an editor at a translation company mm -hmm. for a year. Um, where they didn't believe that I spoke English. So I was in charge of a <laughs> Russian for some reason. What? I, was, <laughs> I speak more Spanish, but yeah, I was in charge of mm. Russian. Um, and then I changed jobs and I got um, a job as an in-house translator at another company for about three years um, where I translated um, video games. Mm. And I became a freelance translator when I was 26. And then I was mainly doing um, entertainment industry stuff like uh, video games, uh, like manga, yeah. uh, like documentary, stuff like that. Um, and in the meantime, I got married and I had my first daughter and we moved back to the States, mm -hmm. California, actually. I was mm -hmm. there for like oh, four okay. years. Mm -hmm. And I continued working as a freelancer, but uh, you know, being a work at home mom, is tough. It's hard to switch between yeah. the two modes of mom and you know translator. And oh, so yeah. I was overworking myself. I got sick and I wasn't a happy mom. Mm -hmm. And so I took a step back from translating and I didn't work as much. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started focusing more on photography. And I, I'd always loved photography, but it wasn't really something I could, I thought I could uh, pursue as a career, but um, mm -hmm. people kept on asking me to take pictures for their families after seeing my pictures. This is amazing. And uh, can I just ask you about your name as well? Mm -hmm. So you oh. go by Miwa, but Miwa Teresa. Teresa. Yeah, so yeah. Teresa is my middle name. Mm -hmm. And when I was working as a translator, when I first tried to get work as a translator, because mm -hmm. I translate from Japanese to English and not yeah. the other way around, because you want to translate into your more... Uh, fluent language. I'm, I'm better at English. Uh -huh. um, when I tried to get work and I, and I just use my Japanese name, they'd be like, mm. oh, I don't know, you know, like they yeah. wouldn't really believe that I was a native English speaker. And then I decided to use my middle name as well. I don't know. It's kind of maybe tricking them in a way that oh. they would think, oh, wait, are they, is she American? Is she like half? Is yeah, she, yeah. what is she? But it, it worked actually. And people oh, yeah. took me a little bit more seriously as a Japanese English translator, I think, mm -hmm. uh, just like the, the Japanese um, companies that I work with at least. And mm -hmm. that kind of stuck and I just kept on using that. So. Ah, I see. But that's really mm -hmm. true though for resume with uh, resume screening with the name. I forget there's yeah. a specific term for it. Um, I learned it during a sociology class, but so basically, like if you use, if there are two resumes with same qualifications and then one name was, I think my sociologist teacher's name was Jill, like Jill White. And then she also put, I forget what was the example. I think it was like a Hispanic name. Uh -huh. You know, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like a Hispanic name and uh, Jill White would get mm -hmm. more, more for screening. That's really, I mean, that's kind of depressing, but that's probably the reality. It is. Mm -hmm. and, it, I, and I myself experienced the same way too. Mm -hmm. So when I was submitting a resume with my uh, maiden name Emiko Takahashi mm -hmm. I didn't get much but then as soon as I switched my name to Rasmussen although like it, uh, it doesn't really uh -huh. match with Emiko and Rasmussen but, uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah and I got more phone calls that's interesting I mean it's mm -hmm. it's kind of it really is kind of sad but it is sad however <laughs> it I hope that maybe by the next generations or like, you know, for our kids, mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't happen as much. I don't know why, but yeah. it's it's like a, a con unconscious bias, I think, that people are yeah. for recruiting. But that's why I made sure that when I'm naming my kids, it's nothing really too Asian. Like my, my, my kids both have middle names and they're mm -hmm. like Japanese sound, but... Mm -hmm. When you so their hear, first name is more uh, yeah, just uh, American, like Haley and Lily. Mm -hmm. So, well, Lillian, so Haley Rasmussen and Lillian mm -hmm. Rasmussen, you would never expect right. to have I, this My kids, face. too. My, yeah. my girls, I purposely named them so that their names could be, trans like, 
pronounced in both Japanese and oh, English. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, like, me, I almost、uh, use Miwa as the middle name for my <laughs> old <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to do B, like, Utsukushi ni wa. Ano. Oh, so there. So, But anyway, so got it. Yeah, and that's thank you so much for sharing that. And、uh, let, I want to know so you were saying that you were, you grew up in this, no, you were born in Japan and you grew、yeah. up in the States.、Yeah. Then you went back to Japan. Mm -hmm. Back to the state. Right. So, what, what are the lessons did you learn by just going back and forth? Like, I have interviewed so many people and who have a similar experiences like、mm -hmm. you do.、Mm -hmm. um, you know, like some people,、uh, this, the previous guest I interviewed, like she was raised in a homeschooling where she only learned English in Japan. Oh, yeah, I listened yeah. to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Yeah, so, like, what, how was your experience like? Well, there was definitely like culture shock when I first started living in Japan after high school. Yeah. You know, it's, it's technically my home country, but it felt foreign to me. Oh, yeah, but, because、um, you moved when you were one, right? Yeah, like yeah. around one, and I moved back when I was 18.、Mm. But, I mean, it was, a, it was, It felt foreign, but in a, in a good way. It was、yeah. kind of cool. You know, it was like new. And, and,、uh, but I did have a lot of like bad and weird experiences, as、mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone does. But,、mm -hmm. um, but with the initial going back and forth, it, it was hard for me to find where I fit in.、Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I grew up in the States, I was one of the very few Asians in my grade. And so no matter what I did, I, I think I would always be a little different from everyone else. And、right. I wasn't really too aware that I was different from everyone until I was in like second or third grade, I think.、Mm. And one of my,、um, I wanted to have a play date with a friend. And、yeah. she, went to, she went home and asked her mom. And then she came back to school and told me that she couldn't because her mom doesn't like Japanese people. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? And I was like, what? what? You know, like, what kind of people? <laughs> like, I knew I was Japanese, but it didn't really. Yeah, you didn't really classify it as like you were Japanese. I didn't, or yeah, or like I was like Asian or that right, anyone right, right. was anything、yeah. really. So, yeah, you were just a kid. <laughs> I was just a kid, right?、Yeah. But、um, that kind of opened the floodgates, and you know, I started to realize that I was a little different.、Mm -hmm. um, and you were and in Connecticut? I was in was Connecticut. In okay. That was in Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut.、Um, but you know, on the other hand, in Japan, when I went back to Japan, I could pass as like a normal person.、Mm -hmm. oh, 外見も普通に日本人だし、ねうんうんうん、普通に日本語も話せるし、うん、But if I spoke for too long, you know, I, I would end up saying something wrong or stupid, and people would be like, ah, ah, 帰国子女だから or like, you know, ah, ちょっと頭悪い人なんだみたいな。What? Oh my goodness. って思われてるような気がした。うんうんうんうん。So, I mean, people are always trying to. Pigeonhole you into a category, I think.、Mm -hmm. You know, when there are actually so many different types of people with different backgrounds nowadays that yeah it's it, I mean, they shouldn't be categorizing you like that. But I felt like people were doing that to me, and I didn't know where I fit in in either country. And Ugh, yeah, and so, I mean, in the States, I felt different. And then I, when I moved to Japan, I felt even more different.、Right. Um, but, you know, After going back and forth, I think, and just growing up in general, I think、mm -hmm. I know now that I'm, that I'm lucky to have both countries. Like, I, I didn't feel like I belonged in either at first, but now、mm -hmm. I can appreciate both、mm -hmm. at like a native level that only、right. people from that country could really grasp, you、yeah. know? And that's, I really want my girls to understand that too and live that.、Mm -hmm. So, do you take your girls to Japan often, or how, how often do you get to take them? Well, we were there、um, in the summer, and、oh, nice. we're, we're hoping to go every year.、Mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of like it, it, it was hard, though, because my youngest daughter, she's really American. And she. <laughs> <laughs> youngest <laughs> totally, one?、Oh, yeah. No, my, my oldest daughter. Oh, oldest she's. Yes,、uh -huh. yeah, she's. Well, Kanari America Jin. Kanari America Jin. I mean, she speaks Japanese, and,、mm. but her Japanese skills are a little bit、um, weaker than her English.、Mm -hmm. And so I was worried that you know, she would feel 
very different in Japan, but she's so outgoing and mm-hmm. she loved it there. She, she did a, a taiken yugaku. Mm-hmm. Taiken yugaku. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it, yeah, I thought it could go either way. You know, she'd be like, Oh my God, I hate this place. Or she'd be like, <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. And, yeah. and she loved it. Oh, good. So. Yeah. My daughter, my, the older one, uh, she, when she did the Taiken Yugaku, she enjoyed everything except Kyushoku. <laughs> my daughter, too. Yeah. I, yeah. And I get it. Just, ne, yeah, but shokuji, just the, chigai, it's, it's healthier for sure compared to the American cafeteria. Like, right. So you've had Kyushoku before. I've never, I was, oh. So I never had it before, so I was like oh, excited. For her. I was like, I heard it's really good, you know. And then yeah, she was like, she went, and I, then she was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't like it neither. I know. I was in school. I was like, 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 what the oldest one? She's allergic to peanuts, uh-huh. and so like it's kind of like weird to think like back then they used to have a peanut butter and a peanut like peanuts uh-huh. eye, like uh-huh. like a whole uh-huh. so, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or like a king pira gobo. Like, mm-hmm. no, I just I absolutely hated it. I don't know, like, that. Oh my gosh! I, there's like one specific thing. Oh, chili con can. I think it's it's what just like a. I think it's just that's, that's chili. Yeah, but it's, I yeah. think it's a chili, like, you know, like the soup. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. But I didn't like that. And then, nan toka ni, naka ni mono ke, masuka. Oh, and then, hijiki toka. I just, I don't know. Yeah, so, so, so. I think it's difficult to eat as a kid. Well, I don't know. 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 So, that's why it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. So, I always get to the end. And then, when I was playing, I was just alone. I was like, the teacher said, I'm going to eat today. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. That's why it's stress. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And appreciate, you know, what you get and everything. Yeah, However, yeah. It, is, it is challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So you, not only, you know, you had this great experience but you're do, providing that for your little kids as well so that's oh, amazing yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and then from there you uh you you went to high school and then went back to college right in the right. states i don't know i went so i went to high school here mm-hmm. in the states and then mm-hmm. i went to college in japan oh you did college in japan right. too uh-huh. yeah and okay. I work in Japan for a few years. Gotcha. Then, so that's yeah. when you're doing the the um, translating. Yes. I just like I really love how you are like you have multiple outlet for your career in terms of mm-hmm. you know you did freelancing and translating and photography mm-hmm. and what just can you tell us like how that is kind of like leading to like one to the other? I know you kind of like told us that mm-hmm. you know you didn't you didn't really enjoy this like freelancing and i think what's it's hard for us is like Mm -hmm. we feel like once you you know once we do it like we feel like we have to stick to it and we have to do it but then for (laughs) you you said no i'm not being a great mom i'm just gonna take Mm -hmm. a little bit of break so like can Mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit more on like how like what was going through and how you said no i'm not gonna do this and then another thing open up and like yes i'm gonna do this yeah well uh, I need to backtrack a little because mm-hmm. it's not it's not that I didn't enjoy freelancing. I, I loved it, actually. I, okay. I when I was just when I didn't have kids and I would work like 15 hours a day, I would just sit at my computer and it was, I was so happy. Like mm-hmm. as a kid, my <laughs> dream was to become a writer and work from oh. home. Gotcha. You know, and and, you know, one of my best friends, she calls me a akaru hikikomori. <laughs> so I'm completely happy being by myself at home in my own world. And yeah. so. Being a fr- freelance translator, like working from home, was sort of perfect for me. And you know, a translator friend of mine told me how most translators are are writers at heart, or like failed writers at heart, or something. And, <laughs> and you know that we all wanted to write and loved writing. That's why we do that. And I think that's true for me too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also love like creating things in general. So even when I was translating like twelve plus hours a day, like I would be painting or drawing or taking pictures and I always mm. had creative outlets and I, I always needed to be creating something. Yeah. And, and like translating uses a completely different part of your brain than like photography. 
So Mm -hmm. I think using my free time to do the other things that I love, like it helped me balance my life. Yes. And then after I had my daughter and, you know, it was hard because as a, so I started working like two weeks after I had her and I would have her in my arms, Mm -hmm. translate, typing on my computer with one hand and she'd be my other, other arm and oh, go to sleep. And then she'd go to sleep and then I would finish up or I'd be like, well, I was in Japan. So I'd be like walking to the um, supermarket. And Mm -hmm. then the moment she would fall asleep in the stroller, I would like you turn into like a nearby Starbucks and Uh. whip open my laptop and start working. And then when she starts crying and waking up, I would shut it down and continue to go to the supermarket, you know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. At at night I would be working at night too. Like, and I realized like I, I was not happy Mm because I wasn't doing a hundred percent for either of them. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I was like, you know, no one's happy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing this, you know, it's, it's not, it's not working. So, um, when, when I, um, started to scale back on my workload, I got more into photography and I took like online courses and I just kept on shooting and, Mm -hmm. and that just, just led to my second career. It's not like I really planned for it, but I think, I don't know, just, I, I'm a firm believer that things happen for a reason, and yeah. I think it's connected that way. So when you mentioned that you decided to take on an online course for photography, mm-hmm. was it just like a, a regular online course, or is it like through a school? Um, one of them I took through a school, Okay. Um, but the other ones, I'm always just like online looking, oh, I have a lot of like photographers that I like, yeah. and if they have like courses, I'll, I'll do it, you yeah. know, if I can get in, so... So um, for taking those, you didn't mind it at all, even if you have kids and stuff, right? Yeah, because actually for those courses, though, uh-huh. I started doing that when my when my daughter started to go to preschool oh, for a few right. hours. Uh-huh, so I uh-huh. had like I had like three hours or four yeah. hours. Oh, my goodness. That, Good that's what you. I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you realized that when the kids are getting older and then you, you saw that, okay, now I have a little bit of time. That's when I mm-hmm. want to invest your, you know, invest myself and do what I really want to do. Yeah. I, actually, I wasn't even thinking, I'm going to be a photographer when I was do- taking those right. courses. It's it just, more like a hobby, passion yeah. kind right. of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then how, how did this like business of being a photographer or career, I guess, um, started then? So some of your friends asked to take pictures. Yeah. And, and then they just, ref- I, I guess they would put the pictures on their walls and then their friends would see it and they'd be like, mm-hmm. who took that picture? And, and I actually, most of my, um, clients are Japanese expats. So mm-hmm. I was taking pictures in California too, and here in yeah. Dallas as well. But cause yeah. a lot of Japanese, a lot of the Japanese expats, I feel like they want to take pictures. They want to have their t- pictures taken, but some of them don't speak English as well. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. it's comforting for them, I think. Yeah. And it's, it's easier for them to oh, ask yeah, me, I think. Yeah. yeah, because it's hard to explain, like, what kind of sitting, so that what, what kind of feeling or what kind of, I don't know, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, a technical word for it for a photographer, but, you know, like, uh, right? You want to mm-hmm. say it, but then if you cannot explain that well, yeah, that, yeah. that would be very frustrating mm-hmm. for them. Uh, your pictures are amazing by the way (laughs) thank you beautiful like that's how i was like so into you like every single time i look at (laughs) (laughs) the instagram accounts like you're one of the person like oh my goodness like i don't know what time you posted like is it this morning or whatever like you posted Mm -hmm. this picture of your kitchen like oh my goodness oh i think that's this morning yeah (laughs) That was like on my phone too. I think there's like a mix of what? phone pictures and a mix of like my regular DSLR. It's mixed what? in there. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. So I, this is something that like I have to mm-hmm. ask you about for your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're saying that you know you you like you're a photographer and you like to take pictures and you are also taking pictures of your house right my personal account is mainly my house Mm -hmm. yeah and um 
I want to know, like, what what is your inspiration? Like, I just love everything about your house. Like, I I have been asking you, like, can you do the tour and <laughs> just show us <laughs> yes. how you do it? And I think you are calling that it's a minimalist lifestyle. Minimal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, your house is. I'm pretty sure there are some days that it, your house might be crazy because you have、mm-hmm. two kids. There are moments. I'm assuming、yeah. <laughs> it's it's so much better than my house. Like my house is like ridiculous. <laughs> like if you come, like I think you can't even breathe. It's like too oh, crazy. Oh no! Oh, get off! Get off! Really, 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 本当にもうなんか靴が飛んなんでこんなとこに靴が飛んでってんだろうって思うぐらいなんか変なところに靴が<笑><笑>あったり。Yeah, and my husband, like, I'm not complaining. I, I,、mm-hmm. I love him so much, but he is so much different than I am. Like, I'm a type of person when I wake up, I make bed.、Uh-huh. But he doesn't. And some people are, some people, you know, grew up like that. And that's okay. Cause they, they think that, well, I'm gonna go to bed again anyway. So what's the point of fixing? <laughs> I think that's their mindset. And, and I, I'm not judging that cause that,、mm. that's what he va- values.、Mm-hmm. So I don't even expect him to do it anymore. Like before, like when I got married, like I was trying to like, you know, change him. Like、mm-hmm. I'm gonna change you. Like, you know, trying to like teach him like how to do it. But like it's not happening. And it's been like over 12 years now. And like, <laughs> Like, you know what? I'll do it. It only takes、yeah. like, a couple minutes. So,、mm-hmm. you know, pick the fights. But anyway, so how can we live the life as a minimalist? Like, I'm super interested in it. I think、mm-hmm. I read, actually, I read a book, but I didn't read it. It was the、uh, Audible book. There's so <laughs> many books out there, like documentaries.、Yeah. Uh, I've always liked、um, things neat and tidy, like Kirezuki.、Mm. But、um, it probably wasn't as like, defined as it is now. but... I think I came to embrace minimalism, like largely due to the fact that my oldest daughter is, is really allergic to dust. She's like、oh, majorly,、okay. it triggers her asthma.、Mm-hmm. So I need to keep everything as clean as possible. Like it's,、mm-hmm. it's just a necessity. So I wipe all surfaces down twice a day and I vacuum every night. And、mm-hmm. it was just easier to do that and keep everything clean if I don't have a lot of stuff out.、Mm-hmm. So once I started leaving less and less things lying around, it just felt More freeing and relaxing at home. Yeah. And so that just sort of kind of got me going in that. And, and also, I have to mention that I've moved to six different houses in the past seven years.、Mm. And with every move, I would go through our stuff and, and you know,、mm-hmm. keep only what we really loved and needed. And, yeah. And that has helped us to kind of, I don't know, just have what we need. And, and I was able to. Really get rid of and donate the things that we never really use anyway. And、mm-hmm. I know most people won't be moving that many times or、right. get a chance to be forced to, to go through their things like that. But I think,、um, I think the most important thing is to really be conscious of what you bring into your home because,、mm-hmm. um, in one of the books I read on minimalism,、mm-hmm. um, it explains how like, the cost of something isn't just the actual price that you pay for it, it's also、like、the amount of time. You'll use to take care of it,、oh、to repair、goodness. it, like、mm-hmm. look for it, put it away. Like, time is money, really. So, true. Really, you spend so much of your time taking care of the things that you own, if you think about it, you know?、Yeah. And the less you own, the more time you'll have for other things. So, like, for toys, for my kids' toys, I think I have like 70% of my kids' toys and books stored away, like out of sight. And I, I rotate them every now and then.、Um, you but were that general, mom. Oh, yeah,、wow. that mom. <laughs> but, but in general,、um, they don't have a lot to choose from, but that means it takes them less time to clean up at night, and it gives me, like, it gives them more time to do other things. And、um, mm. it, ideally, I wouldn't be rotating things around. You know, I wouldn't have that much stuff, but, you know, they're seven and two, and、yeah. there's only so much I could get rid of. I can't have just like one book, you know? <laughs>、yeah. So that age、um, difference actually is a little bit challenging, don't、yes. you think? Because, like, even if the older one is done, but the, the little one is still. Yeah, that's well done. why I have, to, I have to keep a lot of the stuff, and a lot of it's in my, in my garage because in a few years, you know, the younger one will be、mm-hmm. needing it.、So. Um, but I'm also really strict about cleaning up,、mm-hmm. you know,、um, kids. Like, if they leave something out at night, 
um, I take it as a sign that I'm allowed to throw it away. Like I'm not actually going to throw it away right oh away. My gosh. I, I, yeah. I, put it, I put it in like a chest in the garage yeah. and they know that I'll do that. I'm like, yeah. you know, and then yeah. if they let me do that and if yeah. they never ask for it again, uh-huh. it means they, they really didn't need it. So oh my I, gosh. I'll probably I'll totally implement do. that. <laughs> and if they do ask for it, it means that they want it. And so it'll be back in the rotation of toys, you know, and that's, it goes, it's the same thing for like clothes that, that I own. Mm. Um, like, you know, like out of sight, out of mind, you know, right. like every now and then I go through my clothes. I, I don't have a lot anyway, but, and I put things that I haven't worn in a while into a box or a bag and I put it away. And if I remember something that's in there in like a few weeks or like a few months, I'll put it back in my closet. But if I have no idea what's in there, like I didn't need it in the first place. Right. And so it goes to, good, you know. Oh my goodness. You're just like, I am super ready to just go through <laughs> my house again. Like I, I did that after I didn't read the book. Um, <laughs> what the call Murray, Maria Kondo san <laughs> and the sparks. What is the title again? I forget what sparks joy or something like that. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I listened <laughs> to her like the podcast that she was uh, on a guest, I listened to several of them and I was super motivated and I went through that and it's crazy like how many bags that I was able to donate but it's funny like I'm I'm in uh, my recording studio which is my closet I'm Uh looking at (laughs) my clothes and like oh my gosh I don't need this I don't need that like I could totally yeah pick and just put it in the donation box yeah (laughs) And it's hard to just give it away or throw it out right away, I think. So that's why you need that, like, cushion of time where you put it away. Uh Yeah, you sit on it. And then you think about it. Because a few times I've been like, I want to wear that shirt. And I'm like, ah, I threw it out. Or I I gave it away, you know. And I I do that sometimes. But, but, you know, it, it, it just makes more sense that way. Because you don't, you're only using, like, they say you only use or wear, like, 20%. Of mm-hmm. what you own, and all the other mm-hmm. stuff, it's just there for like what if, like kore yegi de tsukayo or, or oh something. You know, gosh. like that's not a thing. Yegi de tsukayo, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I do that all the time. Like, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna wear it at work, but maybe I'll just wear it like at home or something. Yeah, so and those, keep things, it. those things, just stick it in a, in a bag and oh, and, okay. and think about it later because maybe you can have like one yegi or two, mm-hmm. but like. I feel like most of the time, like when you're a busy mom, you come home, you're not going to change into your like EAB right. yeah. and then change into your PJs later. Yeah. You're going to be in your clothes yeah. and then probably stain them, you know, like while you're making dinner. But yeah. Um, oh, you're yeah. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I come home and the uh-huh. first thing that I do is I put my hair in, in my in a bun and I'm not a huge like accessories person but like I have like necklaces and like rings and stuff like I even don't wear uh, wedding rings at home I always put it uh-huh. in yeah because like I don't know what it is but I don't like to wear like accessories yeah. so I just take everything uh-huh. and then I change into like shorts and a tank top uh-huh. and take off my bra like once the bra <laughs> is like gone like that's it like I'm not putting uh-huh. that, pin, that, that thing back so like I'm done for the day uh-huh. so and then that's my pajama too like I don't change yeah. <laughs> to something else exactly like for me too, I mean I'm sure there are people who have like yegi and that's cool that's fine yeah. but for me like if I if I'm gonna change I'm gonna change into my pajama pants like yeah. there's no like yeah. I don't know nothing no in between there so oh my God. Um, yeah, or even totally like a, like nice clothes you know like if you have like something that you love like if you, I guess, if there's space in your closet, you can probably have that. But if it's something that you're like, honestly, by the time you're you're invited to another wedding, like the style has changed, your style has changed. Like maybe you lost weight or gained weight, or you know, who knows? So yeah. I have three dresses that I'm keeping for just in case. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I can see it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is so good. Like I can talk to you forever. Oh my goodness. But yeah, definitely. Uh you said that you live in Texas. Do you, is your house big? Like my uh, assumption is that the, everything in Texas is big. <laughs> that's true. Everything in Texas is big. But um I think well, in California, I lived in a 1600 square foot house. Oh, so it's pretty mm-hmm, small. Then mm-hmm. 
here, our house right now is, I think it's like 27 or 2,800. So it's bigger. Yeah. But, you know, my neighbor, she uh-huh. lives in a like 8,600 square foot house. Like oh my our, our house is, is tiny in the neighborhood. Too. Um, yeah. Everyone's always like, your house is so cute. And cute means small, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I feel like if you have a bigger house, like you have more room, space that, yeah. that makes you feel like. Oh, I gotta, you know, fill up with I don't That's know true. furniture mm-hmm. or decorations or something like that. Yeah. So and I think this house is just the right size for us because. Yeah. So my neighbor who has eighty six hundred square feet, she has six kids, so mm. she needs the space. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we only have two kids, and it's easier for me to maintain and clean oh, yeah, and. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Like, I. I'm still waiting for you to do your house tour. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if it'll be like a tour tour, but, but like I'm, I'm going to work on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, for the listeners, like if you want to see how amazing this house, I, well, I think everybody has a different taste. And, mm-hmm. you know, like some people like, I don't know, gorgeous stuff. And some people may mm-hmm. like, um, what's the word, like rustic Mm -hmm. or you know like something yeah 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 firm so like whatever that is but like i like like minimalist this like a simple is is there a specific name for this my son yeah modern uh i i don't know my my house is like i think it's like there's a bit of farmhouse in here we have a lot of shiplap so it's like a modern Modern, farmhouse i don't know it's like a mix of stuff yeah yeah but if you want to know what I'm talking about, please go to her <laughs> Instagram. It is Miwa Teresa. Is it the handle? Like, at Miwa yeah. Teresa? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I mean, you will love it for sure. Like, it this definitely inspires me. Like, how can I get rid of more stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much for the inspiration. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it's time for me to ask you some Her Confidence Her Way power questions. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so the first question, you can answer this in Japanese and English either way. Mm-hmm. How would you define your own self-confidence and how are you building your own? Well, my self-confidence, I think it's, it's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I've always had low self-esteem, low self-confidence, and I know that it's always gotten in my way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's gotten better than before, probably, mm-hmm. because of age and just yeah, realizing that... <laughs> You'll, you know, you'll never really be happy or get anywhere in life if you keep on doubting yourself. Mm-hmm. I've always been a, a worrier and I'm always worrying about things and, you know, things that probably won't even happen or things that already happened that I can't change. You know? Right. Um, my husband told me when we were in college and I was job hunting, um, and it's been like a motto for me ever since, like stop putting unnecessary pressure on yourself. Mm-hmm. And just just take a step back and get out of your head. Mm. Uh, have Have you heard the phrase like, "Those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind." Like, Ooh, yes.気にする人は重要じゃなくて重要な人は気にしないからって。Yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And what is your gifted talent and how are you using it? That's a hard question. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my talent maybe is perseverance, being able to concentrate and stay mm. focused on something. Like mm-hmm. I want to say, you know, my talent is being creative or mm-hmm. something like that. But when I really think about it, I don't think that's it. I think it's my ability to be able to stick with something and really put my all into it. Yeah. And I, I think it's a gift that a lot of people have. So like whether it's work, like translating or photography, motherhood, like minimalism or interior design, like I think I get really into each thing until mm-hmm. it like consumes me almost, and mm-hmm. it's made me grow in every interest yeah. that I have. I mean, I I'm aware I've, I have too many interests. There's so many things that I'm interested in, in that I want to do, and there's just not enough time in the world for me to do everything that I want yeah. <laughs> to pursue. Yeah, but that's good though that you're able to just like focus on one thing. Like sometimes like I. Got- I have a lot of things that I want to do and then like yeah. I'm doing one thing and and like switch on to something else like wait what what was I doing for the other one like <laughs> sometimes I just get <laughs> uh, so yeah 
That's cool. Okay, so ikigai is. Have you ever heard of the term ikigai? Yes. I okay, have. perfect. So, what is your ikigai and what excites you? Or what is your reason to jump out of bed each morning? Well, definitely my girls, my husband, my family, like my, my life in general. I think that's my ikigai. But yeah.、Um, Also, I think being inspired, like finding inspiration and beauty and like the little things that I see every day. Like if I see sunlight hitting a tree in, in a particular way, or if I see like an expression on someone's face that、mm-hmm. just overflows with any kind of emotion, it, it inspires me. Like I'm immediately thinking, like, how can I, how could I capture this、oh, if I had、wow. a camera in my hands? Like I'm always、That's、taking、beautiful. pictures in my head,、yeah. or, like, or like painting or drawing in my head, like writing a phrase or a poem. Like, I'm always trying to create something out of the things that inspire me,、oh、even if it's、gosh. just in my head. So, that's, I'm really excited about that every morning to,、yeah. to know what, what is going to inspire me that day. Because it could be anything. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the last question. What would you like to say to women who are listening to this podcast who are wanting to live a purposeful and meaningful life with confidence? Oh,、uh, I, I think I'd say、um, to live in the moment, like be in the moment, because I know it's something that's said all the time, but I really believe that if you're able to do that, it, it will change your life. Like, especially if you worry a lot, like, like me. Like,、mm-hmm. I try my best to live in the moment when I'm, when I'm aware of it. And it's not all the time because, you know, I get lost in my thoughts a lot, obviously, to the most of the most of the time. When I do remember to live in the moment, like to enjoy whatever is happening at that particular moment, instead of dwelling about you know, what someone said or what's going to happen later that day, like it gives clarity to、yeah. your life. Like, like even if I'm like cleaning the toilet with my daughter, my two year old next to me, and I, I could easily just be like, oh, this is disgusting. And like, I wish my daughter would like take three steps back so I don't splash her with the water. <laughs> you know? But well, when I'm aware and I'm living in the moment, I'm thinking only about what I'm doing. So, like, I'd be like, Wow, that's so clean. Like, man, this will feel nice later. And I'd tell my daughter, like, and I really think、oh, that. I like so, that. like, I, enjoy, I actually enjoy cleaning the toilet now. Like, I don't look forward to it, but when it happens, <laughs> like, I'm getting the most out of it that I can. And,、yeah. and my daughter always says, like, like, every time. And she gets excited with me. Like, she doesn't associate cleaning as a chore, as like a nuisance, because it truly makes us happy. So, I mean, that's,、oh, a, wow. that's a weird example. But no, <laughs> but、really、just but like, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> just、oh、appreciating、like、every moment. That's, I think that's the key to, to really being happy. Like,、mm-hmm. When your kids want to like, take off their pants and then put them on again and then like, off again and on again right before you leave, you know, instead, of, instead of letting it annoy you because you're going to be late, just take a step back and like, live in the moment. And like, she won't be doing that for much longer.、Yeah. And wa- if you watch how. Proud they are, you know, and how hard it is for them to, to do、yeah. that simple task. But it's, it's like their mountain, you know. And, and like, of course, you'll be late and there might be consequences, but in the grand scheme of things, like,、yeah. a, few, a few minutes doesn't matter. True.、So. Oh、Into、my gosh. Yeah, we fight, we fight、yeah. about that like all the time.、Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, just be in the moment, enjoying the moment,、That's、and focusing、amazing. on the moment. Yes. Yes, thank you. I needed that. So, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty sure、uh, the listeners are like, oh my goodness, like, I want to know more about this <laughs> woman. Like, who are you? So, where can we find you and、um, how the listeners can connect with you? So, my Instagram, my personal Instagram is、uh, Miwa Teresa, M M I W A T H E R E S A. And I actually recently. Um, started a different account for my photography,、yeah. uh, my, my clients. That's,、yeah. um, and that's Miwa Teresa Photography for Instagram.、Mm-hmm. Um, I think just my family is following me right now. It's cool.、Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> and then、uh, I have my website, which is、um, www.miwateresa.com. And that's for my、uh, photography. Yeah. So、mm-hmm. if. People are in Texas.、Uh, which area of Texas? I'm in the Dallas, Dallas. suburbs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, if your listeners who happen to be in that area and need a photographer, for sure, who to go to now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for everything. I just 
like I said, I was like a fangirl <laughs> of you. Were so <laughs> thank like, you. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. There you have it. I hope you had enjoyed my conversation with Miwa. If you are into home decor, especially if you like simple minimalist vibe, she would be the go-to person. So yeah, go follow her Instagram account. Before I let you go, I also wanted to highlight what Miwa and I talked about, which is really taking care of ourselves because if we're not happy, <laughs> we can't be happy for kids, right? よく飛行機に乗ると、まあ、よくというか多分必ずあると思うんですけれども、まあ、飛行機が飛ぶ前に何か緊急な時のためにっていう、えーえー、フライラテンダントさんが何かこういろいろとやりますよねでその時に酸素マスクのデモンストレーションしますねでもしも子供がいる場合は自分が酸素マスクを先にかぶってその次に子供っていうふうにいつも言ってますよね。I, I hope you pay attention because those are very important demonstration. で、私が子供がいない時は、なんでと思ったんですよ。なんで先に自分なの子供先でしょっていうふうに私は思ったんですね。But now I really understand the importance of why you have to put your, your air mask first so that you can help the other kids or people around you, right? It, it's like, duh, like, 本当にママになってこれは分かったことです。なので本当に自分が幸せ、ハッピーではないと、子供にも、とか、まあ、ハズバンとか、パートナーとか、本当にファミリーメン、ファミリーメンバーにまでこう八つ当たりとかをしてしまうのでもしも今やってることがなんか It's not working 本当に何だろうイライラしてしまったりとかなんか全然自分を犠牲にしてるしてママ業やってるなっていうふうに思ってる方がいたら I think we need to pause for a little bit It's not the time to <laughs> really step in the gas and just move forward No, I, I don't think so I think we should stop And think and ask a question like, Am I happy? Is this what I really want to do? 他のことがやりたいって思うことは別に It's not selfish neither. Facebook のグループの方でも以前、えっと、彼女のお,、ね、お悩みでもこうママになりたいって心から望んでいたのに今なんだか自分を犠牲にしているようにな気がしていますって自分の子供たちが可愛くて大好きなのですがっていうふうに、えー、とお悩みをシェ,アしていただいかシェアしていただいた方もいるんですけども「It's you're not alone and you're not selfish」本当に私は思います。私も子供がいて、子供を置いてまで何かしに行くこととかもあって、すごいママとしてギス、なんかギルト、ママギルト、すごい罪悪感とかを感じることもある,あるし、今でも本当は実は感じることっていっぱいあります。なので、I, I understand how you feel, especially if you're a mom and you know, you're feeling like,、uh, なんでママになろうってなりたいと思ってるのにこういう気持ちなんだろうっていうそういう方の気持ちすごくわかりますでも You don't need to limit yourself You don't need to なんて言うんだろう本当に犠牲にしてまでママママじゃなきゃいけないっていうことはなくて You can be a mother and you can do something and another and another I think it's important that you are living the fullest potential and You are doing the things that will satisfy you, that will fulfill your heart so that you can be kind to others. You can take care of yourself, I mean, you, yourself and your family, and you are also being a role model. I hope this message is something that is encouraging you or reminding you that you are not alone because. You're definitely not alone in this. I get it. Remember, you are enough. If you ever feel like you are not good enough, 
That means it's because you are just not aware of your potential, or maybe you have never allowed yourself to be you. I always tell you this: that you don't need a permission, and it's not the permission to become someone; it's the permission to be you. I love you so much, and thank you so much for listening. Bye bye.